Hi, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. And today, in honor of it, shh, in honor of it being Pride Month, uh, I am going to do a little chatty get ready with me and just talk about my journey as a queer person, how, when, who, what, when, where, why, you know what I'm saying? Um, because I feel like it's really important to put stories out there of queer, you know what I'm saying? Of like, what my experience has been allowing people to like see queer people as people like I know that maybe I don't look like or maybe I do maybe I do look like the most outwardly queer person but it's something that I guess it's always going to be a part of my identity and I personally feel like I don't talk about my queerness enough even though I do feel as though it's something that I just work more casually into conversation because I feel like it's just a part of who I am and it is one of more one of those more casual things it's again something that I don't feel like I talk about a lot personally and I feel like I would like to talk about it more and again pride month kind of gives me an excuse uh but anyway I hope you guys enjoy this I hope that it's educational for someone and that maybe it helps someone else sort out their feelings because I would definitely say that I have had a roller coaster of a journey as far as like discovering my queerness figuring it out hold on I need to uh, gingy anyway let's just hop into it it's probably going to be a semi long one so I would personally grab a drink or a snack let me know what you're drinking I'm drinking some strawberry mango tea that I chilled to make it more of a cold tea it's really good but anywho I guess my story and I, I feel as though this is where I mean of course queerness just because of where we are as a nation, world, society, whatever, um, that it is inherently political. But I know a lot of what I guess people who are against queerness, which is just homophobia, if you didn't know, um, but a lot of people are just like, oh, it's not natural, like nature versus nurture you, you have the people think that you have to learn to be queer I guess that you can't be born queer the same way that you are born straight and I am like the I guess example or an example I know there's probably plenty of other people out there but I'm an example of the fact that it is very much so um I wouldn't necessarily say it's genetic or anything but it's definitely something that I feel as though you are born with versus oh everyone's queer because they you know people are seeing it more um and other people are just mimicking like no it's definitely something that most queer people no matter where they fall along the spectrum kind of can tell because the first crush is, crush slash crushes which should tell you where we're going that I can remember having that wasn't just me picking out someone and being like oh everyone's talking about boyfriend girlfriend I should pick out this person which was usually like the only other black person in the um specifically black boy in my class that would usually be who I would just kind of pick to have a crush on for the sake of fitting in and being like everyone else but the first time that I can remember actually having what I feel are real feelings was actually for two people at once and um it was my I remember it being I think it was second grade it was either second or third grade but somewhere around there I'm pretty sure it was second grade though and it was my best girlfriend and my best guy friend at that time um even though I I wouldn't say that I had like a lot of friends or like genuine friends well I'm 
before people started getting weird and racist, like I would say that I have friends, like when popularity and stuff didn't really matter as much, which I feel like that stopped in like the second slash third grade. That's when things socially started getting very complicated uh, for me personally. I don't know, other people might not have had too rough a, a time, but I was very much so struggling socially. Either way, it was my best girlfriend at the time and my best guy friend at the time. No need to name names. I can say that one of them, I've talked about this on my TikTok before about how I am usually a person who likes like in my queerness today more androgynous and masculine leaning and presenting people but if there's one exception to that rule it is redheaded women redheaded feminine people like they just I don't know what it is y'all just got it and I little uh, second grade me wanted it the guy that I was interested in is actually like as an adult an out gay man and uh that is something else that I can say I had a lot of crushes on gay guys because honestly I would say the men that I'm into are not even today again as an adult are not like the masculine like hmm you know, like I've got to be manly man. Like, of course I like some, I, like I like masculinity because obviously when I am attracted to androgyny, like there is an aspect of masculinity there. Or when I'm attracted to mask women, there is obviously like a attraction to masculinity, but there's something about masculinity on a man sometimes when it's not like chivalrous masculinity it's more of that toxic like ooh, ha, ha, type of primitive masculinity that's when i'm at. and honestly i don't like that type of masculinity on women or non-binary people or any other gender of person so again kind of makes sense but he was definitely a little bit more of it even back then like an effeminate boy I remember he made he honestly was the reason that I developed a taste for like rock and pop punk and stuff like that not saying that I didn't listen to that because my mom listened to like rock music honestly my parents listened to all different types of music when I was growing up but um not really much in the pop punk like they listened to classic rock so like he introduced me to Fall Out Boy which is like my favorite band of all time <laughs> and you know that eventually devolves into everything else like Sugar We're Going Down he made me like a little mix CD which is like throwback when you would be able to like burn CDs for people but I remember it had Fall Out Boy and Gwen Stefani specifically on theirs, The Sweet Escape. And um, what is that? What is that? Uh, the Fall Out Boy's, well, not their most popular song according to Spotify. According to Spotify streams, it's Centuries. Uh, but the, the one that I feel like, Sugar We're Going Down, like that classic, that one was. Um, it definitely what kind of shaped my music taste but yeah he burnt me a little CD and everything but uh the kicker was is that they started dating each other and I know this is second grade so by dating it means that they like held hands and maybe gave each other a kiss on the cheek so it's to combat that I, what I did, I remember very vividly um, being like, you know, oh, telling the gal out of this 
love triangle uh that i i was like oh you know sometimes like girls hold like girlfriends hold each other's hands um so i would like hold her hand so that i would get to hold her hand too and um then i would be like oh you know sometimes like girlfriends kiss each other on the cheek so that i would be able to kiss her on the cheek but that's all i did um that was the extent and of course at that time i wouldn't say that i was inherently aware of what those feelings were i just know what they are you know as an adult looking back that i had a crush on both of them like i would have said that i only had a crush on the guy but it was very clear that i had a crush on both of them <laughs> uh and then I was just kind of one of those kids who was like, I'm gonna bury my head and focus on school. I technically wasn't allowed to date or anything. And that's another thing. Like I came from a pretty fundamentally religious household and religious upbringing where like I heard being gay was bad, that it was sin, even though you know as I got older and learned about all of the different translations the Bible has had and what some of the original translations supposedly said it is not gay people that were the sin again there's Google there's TikTok there's plenty of other resources that explain it much more succinctly and intelligently than I can while I'm doing my makeup but I grew up in that type of environment so it's definitely something that I suppressed and suppressed and suppressed and was just kind of like I can't or I'm not supposed to feel this way let me you know try my hardest to not feel this way and it was easy because at least at the time like I would have crushes on people I guess in school but I never really took them seriously like it was just something to have something to do and fantasize about you know maladaptive daydreaming and all of that just because um but I didn't really like act on anything romantic during school because I was like oh I'm putting my head down I was salutatorian of my graduating class so I kind of had that oh I don't have time for relationships air going for me apparently um and this is what other people have said after like I have had some we'll, we'll get to that part of the story because that actually is a part of the story um so I didn't really act on anything I had crushes but I didn't really like again act on anything or do anything with them they were mostly for my daydreaming and you know me going off but I definitely had like Wattpad <laughs> and and that's where like I literally on Wattpad because at the time like now you can go on TikTok or wherever else and just get recommendations for queer books that you can buy at Books A Million whatever and they have wholesome looking even if they're not that wholesome <laughs> wholesome looking uh you know covers and all of that type of stuff but back in my day we had Wattpad and that I would say is responsible for me really like coming to terms with the fact that I was a queer person because just as much as I would read like straight romance if I uh, more than anything I felt like uh, it, and I don't know if it was personal bias or what it was the the queer romance specifically lesbian bisexual like things like that that they had me you know and it really made me investigate like okay why do I like these stories like yes they're well written but I can find well written straight stories and then even further if I was trying to oh did I put on powder I don't think so um if I was trying to find like all, like I never really gravitated towards 
like gay like man it i'm trying not to use like w l w and ml because i'm just like i guess I, I feel like somehow that'll separate me from the brain rot that is wattpad because we all we all know what wattpad was slash is even though now they have a whole bunch of ads and stuff like that i haven't been on there in such a long time because once i saw ads in between chapters i was like eh, i can't do this um but that that's where i would say like i even though i was obviously having feelings for girls like earlier than you know middle school or late middle school slash high school I feel as though that was where I really like came to terms with okay I need to investigate why I don't treat like men gay stories the same as women gay stories like why am I attracted only to one and why not again not saying that there can't be MLM good written books like I read them but I was just kind of like why this doesn't it's not doing it for me as far as again knowing what Wattpad is slash was back in the day I never got into like AO3 and the fan fiction sites personally because I was like I'm not like other girls and didn't really have like my boy band girl band eras or anything like that this brush smells good and I don't really know why <laughs> but then when I went to college was really where I kind of I guess yes miss b <laughs> um was where i really kind of i mean not experimented but tried to experiment a little bit more like i remember explicitly there was this person who was working at the bookstore the first week of college and I remember I was going there getting my books and stuff and just trying to get my life together and I saw them working and I literally just was like please don't let me end up like in their line because <laughs> I was like they're so attractive um and they were at the time a more masculine presenting woman I would say and I was just kind of like please don't make me like go over there you know what I'm saying like don't make me uh be in her checkout and of course I was in her checkout line so I was in her line and I ended up like just basically babbling like I can't remember what exactly I said but I just remember babbling my way through that interaction pretty much and uh then I found out that they actually lived in my dorm building I found I'm a Scorpio so just know that like when I was younger and a little bit more unevolved I definitely exhibited some of those uh classic unhealthy scorpio traits like i am very good at finding out information <laughs> finding social media profiles and stuff like that uh with very little information about someone and i like i was actually going through and deleting things in my phone because i was running out of storage and i went and um what is that called hey can we not eat the cardboard and i saw from a few years ago where i was on hinge and i was i had matched with someone and we were having good conversation and whatever and i didn't see anything in the thread that would have necessarily like given me the ability like enough 
enough information but again as a, a Scorpio I was able to find his Facebook profile and I vaguely remember this but I was able to find his Facebook profile and Callie I was able to find his Facebook profile and just saw that we were not at all like he was definitely just saying what I wanted to hear in order to I guess get me to go out on a date with him and I ended up being like hey I was able to find your social media and we are not at all aligned on our beliefs so I'm gonna have to skip on the date that we were supposed to have. But I have always been able to find information easily whether I'm stumbling upon it just again happening to stumble upon it or whether I find it because I'm searching for it. So found out that they lived in my building. I was able to find out which now that I'm thinking about it we should not have our names and stuff outside of the dorm building like I feel as though that's crazy because if you if you're in the building you can figure out where someone lives which is what I was able to do and um of course I didn't use that to be weird or anything but I was just honestly more than anything trying to use that information as a way to minimize the amount that our paths cross like oh I'm going to use a totally different entrance and exit than the one that is like closest and most convenient because I don't want to come off as a stalker or not even come off as a stalker like I just don't want to like run into this person that I'm interested in like I'm very much so or I at least I used to be like if I liked you I didn't want anyone to know which again I know that's pretty on par Scorpio behavior anywho I went um there was this one day or night I should say I, I was coming back from the no I think I was coming back from class because my dumb self had a I think a class that ended at 7 45 at night and it was storming that night too like just storming so freaking bad and so of course I took the entrance that was or technically like I was walking and you know everyone had umbrellas or whatever um and I noticed in front of me that they were <laughs> in front of me and I was like okay I can either go the long way and get continue to get soaked or I can just cut through this courtyard which is the entrance that was closest to where they lived in the freshman dorm and um like just kind of deal with it so I went with the deal with it route but also I don't know what I was on <laughs> at that time um kind of miss her that version of me a little bit that was just like gonna make a snap decision like that but I decided to like when we were both going through the door they hold, held the door open for me I was like oh thanks and then I stopped them and I was just kind of like hey I've seen you around like the building and stuff because we both live in the same building I think you're really cute <laughs> and uh we stopped and like talked and they were like oh that actually like really brightened my day and nothing came of it after that of course as the person I am I did find again social media profiles Missy what are you doing I did find social media profiles and was able to I, not check up on them but or I, I, I eventually did follow them partially because my sister was just like oh why why not just follow them and I was like that that's a lot that's a lot of commitment to follow someone on Instagram and so she pressed the follow button I think technically to this day I still follow them on that old Instagram account but uh, it's above me I don't even go on that account anymore I guess kind of put myself out there and even though nothing came from it it was still just like the first time that I really like dealt with that um, 
However, when I was talking about it with a friend from high school, and this is probably where I'll end here since I'm mostly done with my makeup. And of course, I'm always willing to do a part two or another video of this, um, or I guess continuation talking about previous, which I've talked about on other social media platforms before. When I had a podcast at one point, I talked about my first queer relationship, like actual relationship, <laughs> not just fantasy in my head relationship. But uh, I remember there was this friend that I had and I thought they were a friend, was texting them and stuff, telling them about my journey and awakening as far as my sexuality, or I shouldn't even say awakening, like just really paying attention to what was always there. And he was very not supportive. Like just, oh, like, how do you know that you like, girl, like, how do you know it's not just the freedom of going to college? So much so that he had someone he met at his school, gave my number out to them and had her texting me being like, oh, I feel as though, like, I fell into the same thing when I felt like I, wasn't loved or appreciated and hadn't been in relationships with guys before because he had passed on the information that I had never been in a relationship and I was just like this is really weird like I'm queer like I like girls because I like girls I like girls because they're pretty I like girls because they smell good I like girls because they dress well I like girl like I I was just kind of like like I like them it's not because I haven't been in a relationship before it's not because of any other reason than the fact that I am a queer person um, and I I don't know if I ended up blocking the number or if I just kind of like, like I remember trolling for a while because again I was a petty person um back in the day but I remember trolling for a while but I don't know if I just like ended up blocking the number and I went back to him and I was just kind of like number one giving my number out to people big no-no I don't like that and number two like where do you get off trying to tell me who I am what I'm attracted to like all of that and all of it came down to the fact that he had always had a crush on me but was too intimidated of me so like me I, I guess I broke his little heart being queer and having a crush on a girl really weird behavior and we don't talk we're not friends anymore because that is very weird behavior like it's not anyone's fault but your own if I don't end up with you like shoot your shot or get it moving but like trying to convince me that I am not a queer person that I am not who I am like that's never going to work so that would be I would say my early queer journey before I really really experimented with my sexuality again totally willing to do more videos about like my first queer relationship um even though like I said I've done those on other platforms and talked about that um yeah anyway my makeup is done this is the look we've got we've got a power wing and a power lip uh so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed hearing me ramble for however long this ended up being and i hope you guys stay safe and healthy and i'll talk to you guys in the next one